Like, don't let life put you in a circumstance or a situation where you stop dreaming. Like, don't let life put you in a situation where you are helping somebody else make their dreams become a reality you forgot you have your, your own. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't get so caught up giving some job 30, 40, 50, 60 hours of your day that you don't have any time left for yourself. What are you made of? What are you prepared to do? Are you holding on to something that won't help you to push the extra mile? That won't help you to push that extra rep that you need? You should care because it's the greatest joy. You should only listen to this if it's leading you down a path that makes you feel more alive. And that's the point. The point is to get in touch with something that makes you feel great, but not to let yourself starve or be stopped. And so what we're going to do right now, we're going to get back to the basics. Right? We're going to get back to, and you know, I wake up every day and people say, yo, E, what's the, like, what's the thing? I know you say execution, but like, what's that thing? And it's like to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion. Like, no, 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 when I wake up every day, like I claim that, that, that the first commandment, not the one later down in the Exodus, like the first one in Genesis, was I was commissioned to be fruitful, to multiply, and to have dominion. <laughs> Like, that's what I was commissioned to do. Like, that was, that's the command. And so, I want you to write down those dreams and goals that you still have that you have not accomplished. So I want you to write them down. Now, do me a favor. Don't, don't, don't adult me. Don't life me. I'm not interested right now in reality. I don't want to talk about reality right now. I remember CJ, he's the president of my organization. And CJ and I used to talk. And I was like, CJ, that's not real. And he said, E, don't let the truth mess up a good story. I'll give you an example of that. Unfortunately, right now, many of you know that my dad has cancer. He has a type of cancer called liposarcoma. Three years ago, I had no idea what that word even meant. I had never heard that word uttered in my life, liposarcoma. And maybe you've had this experience before, too, if a family member's come with, up with diabetes or a heart issue or any type of health issue even for yourself. You're not a doctor, probably most of you listening to this, but you've become pretty knowledgeable, haven't you, about some area of your life, whether that's something you've studied in school or a career you've chosen you didn't think you'd choose, or like in my case, there was an illness for my dad. I consider myself pretty damn close to an expert on that topic now. I've read so many books, I've studied, I've Googled, I've read research, I've read about the different chemos, alternative treatments, I've read about eating green. I mean, you name it, right? Like I've gone crazy on that topic. And again, I'm not an oncologist, but I went from knowing absolutely nothing to three years later, having an immense amount of knowledge. It's probably one of the 10 things I know most about in my life right now. And so that's because I got obsessed with it. Don't do that. We're not doing that right now. And so do me a favor, I don't, I don't want reality right now. I'm not interested in how much your student loans are. I'm not interested. Because your student loans are sucking your dream. I'm not interested right now. And I got a divorce and right now I just can't. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Eric, I lost a child and you don't know what it's like to. I'm not, I'm not interested in your reality right now. I, I, I want you to get back to your dreams. I want you to get back to your goals because no matter what has happened in life, you've got another 30 years, another 40 years, another 50 years, like you can't get stuck on, like you can't let that thing that devastated you in 1989, the thing that devastated you in uh, 1996, 2001, like you can't wake up every day to 2001. 2001 was a tragedy, yes it was, but you can't stay there. You can't keep waking up to that. I got, you got to wake up to your dreams and go, look, I always tell people, we all go through pain, get a reward for yours. Can you do that with where your goals and dreams are? Like, really, can you do it? Because the truth of the matter is, in society today, society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. To just divert your focus and attention. Look over here, look at this shiny thing. Look at this TV show, look at this sports team. Worry about what's going on here in this war. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives that just get us distracted so we never get obsessed. We never get laser focused for an extended period of time. Will you finish what you start? Are you strong enough? Are you willing enough? Do you have what it takes to do what's necessary to adapt and overcome? Life will continue to go on. So get up, carry on, 
and understand and know that your work is not done yet. There can be no victory without a struggle attached to it. You don't deserve a victory without a failure. In this place, there is no easy. You can't be the best makeup of yourself being easy. It is time for you to show up. It is time for you to show up. By a fear that you'll fail, by a fear that it can't be done, have fun. Have the guts to enjoy yourself. Have the guts to go out and attempt something audacious and terrifying, knowing that all along, if you're doing it right, you're going to have a good time. So all of this, going balls out, trying to prove something to yourself, trying to do something amazing, never lose sight that it's to build a better life. Never lose sight of the fact that you're doing it to create the person that you want to be, never lose sight of the fact that it should be fun. And learn from the failures and move forward with a purpose. For purpose is within you and only failure is there to teach you. It is time to take control of your now, to be able to get back in the driver's seat, to understand that you must be tougher than your life. But what is life? What does life mean to you? Do you feel that life is holding you back? Are you blaming your life for the difficulties that you face day in and day out? Why does life have to be so difficult? As Kurt Vonnegut, one of the greatest authors in modern time said, when I write, I feel like an armless, legless man with a crayon in his mouth. But he still did it. And that's the kind of thing that you're gonna hear from the greats. You're not gonna hear that it was easy. You're not gonna hear that they felt suave and cool. Even the greatest of all time have that awkwardness and that clumsiness. They're never quite as good as they want to be. But what I want you to understand is even though Kurt Vonnegut said those words, he wrote tons of books that changed people's lives, that changed the landscape of literature because despite the fact that he felt awkward and clumsy, he kept doing it and doing it and forcing himself to move forward, to take one step after another, even when the process was not exactly rewarding. He believed in something. He knew that what he was trying to do would ultimately get better. He knew that if he wanted to accomplish something great, that he had to push through the awkwardness. And that is the very trick to getting great. Why must we struggle so much? What good is life if every day there's so much pain? Life is not responsible for how you take care of your own mindset. You must be in control of everything that you do going forward in your life. You must have the possession of understanding that life is good. Doesn't matter what day it is. If you're alive, life is good. If you're struggling, life is good. If you're having a bad day, it's a day to make a difference.